three hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. All right, after show time, we've got uh, Jim and Tom and Tom. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, echo in here. Uh, okay. And, Jim, you have your windows open so the birds can sing and we can hear I the do. nature we're, we're trying something there. different. This is kind of a weird show to begin with, so why follow the standards of broadcast? <laughs> That's right. You know? so, what, quiet studio? you got to be kidding me. Now, right. now, are you close enough to a shooting range to hear the guns go off if you, uh, they start shooting? Oh, we yeah, can, we're, what, 150 feet? We can arrange that. <laughs> I could just put Tom on leave. <laughs> so, so, Tom, run, run out there. Burn here, up some take ammo. this box of ammo, yeah. <laughs> and we got a box of nine sitting right here, actually. Well, I would hope so. Bird. A box of something, anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. yeah, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell you what, Ben is on uh, hold. He's been very patient with us. And let's go ahead and uh, take this. Hey, Ben, thank you so much for hanging around. Hey, no problem. Uh, thanks for uh, sure. holding on for me. Uh, I'm glad you saved me for the after show because I hate talking on the air because I'm such a big idiot. But uh, <laughs> uh, well, so am I. But it never slowed me down. Uh, no, I, I tell you, I, you are. If I, you don't want to ever be around me because I'll pin you down and I'll pick your brain forever because I love <laughs> just love your show. I love what you guys are doing. But you've made me the biggest liar in the whole wide world. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh, what happened? Well, I keep promising my wife that I'm never going to buy a gun again. <laughs> and uh, Good luck. every time I listen to your show, you mention bring one up, and uh, I have to go buy it. So <laughs> today you mentioned in passing. Wait, wait, I thought you said there was a problem here. I'm not heard what the problem is yet. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned in, in passing that someone is no longer going to be producing the Browning High Power, and I didn't know anybody uh, was making the Browning High Power. Well, FN, the you know the company in uh, Fabrique Nationale, uh, has right. been making them, and I, th- I think Browning itself dropped them t- a year or two ago. They discontinued them. But I gather, and this is my understanding, without digging real deep into it, that FN has continued to make them, probably selling them in other parts of the world. Uh, and now the story that I'm looking at, again, I am pulling this off of an article at uh, All Outdoors website, uh, alloutdoor.com. Uh, FN announces the end of the high power. I'm thinking maybe they've been making them and selling them in other parts of the world, but I don't know if anybody has been selling them new in the yeah, U.S. Yeah, I haven't the seen a new one in years. years. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I can, uh, uh I, I, I bought one years ago, and I love it. No, I was just going to say, I think people either love them or they are ambivalent. Nobody hates them, but it's kind of like, okay, yeah, it's an older design, and it's cool, but, you know. But, you know, if you shoot them, you go, man, that is a nice shooting pistol. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I took, uh, every time I take all my guns out, just I have to shoot them at least once. And I, the, uh, when I get that to the Browning High Power, I said, man, this is... So this is the best shooting nine millimeter I've got, hmm. and I've got uh, I've got XDs. I've, I've got I've got uh, I've, well I've got all all kinds. But uh, <laughs> you, okay, uh, you uh, also interviewed the guy uh, who mentioned the uh, into credit card issue. What mm-hmm. what outfit does does he work for? Oh, uh, it was Honor Defense. They are Honor. a gun company. Yeah, on honordefense.com, and they're a gun company based in Georgia. They make their guns right there in Georgia, little carry guns. Okay, okay. I'm going to look at them. I'm going to look them yeah, up. Yeah, take a look. See what you think. Yeah, I think it's honordefense.com. Okay. Keep up the good, good work, deal. guys. I appreciate you. And uh, Well, thank you. Pleasure. We appreciate you hanging in there with us, all right? And look, uh, I, I apologize for making you a liar, but, you know, the pr- only problem here is not that you <laughs> are breaking your promise. The problem is that you made the promise in the first place. I know. I know. I, know. I hate liars, and I've become one. <laughs> you know, I mean, what, what were you thinking promising I'll never buy another gun? I mean, really, and, you know, here's the thing, and, and here's the thing. You're okay because your wife never believed that in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> On the uh, the tennis ball issue, yes. the only way that will work is if the murderer dies, falls down laughing. 
<laughs> Good point. I like that it. So ridiculous. Ben, All thanks right. so much. I'll, I appreciate that. Right. You take care. Or if there's a little bit of C4 in each of the tennis balls. Yeah, now we're talking. Yes, yeah, you got to think outside the tennis ball. C4, C5, whatever it takes. How many do you see? <laughs> You're going to up your game one, right? Going to C5. Okay. I. That was one of those calls that the more I thought about it, the more it depressed me. I just was dismayed at the whole idea that it would be presented as self-defense and then it would be completely swallowed as, and, and say, hey, you know, guess what? We've got this training. We're doing all this stuff. I'm going, man. You know what I would like to do? I would like to have them do that and then have, say, okay, now we're going to do it for real and have somebody walk in there with an airsoft AR and let them try these techniques that they've been taught. First so person defender. Uh, there you go. You're talking first, about our, our, our so? first person defender deal. You say, okay, uh, we're going to provide you with tennis balls, and we're going to show you how you can rush up and supposedly dis. What do you say? It was like a <laughs> tongue in cheek. Ninety five year old woman was going to take an AR away from a guy. Is what she, he said. Yeah, yeah. wrestled him down. And and that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah, it would be like a tongue in cheek <laughs> slash poignant uh, but it, episode. But it's, it just, it almost makes me sad. That people are that stupid? Well, no, it's, you know, look, they're not stupid. They've just been misled. I, I'm, mm, you're polite. I want to know what's going on with the sheriff department offering that. And they're saying, well, you know, we're going to teach you something. It's like, I have a Google uh, alert words thing set up, which is really cool. It's like a clipping service. Right. And anytime the term self-defense comes up, I get the link to the story. Mm-hmm. And so I see all over the country... These self-defense classes being taught to women, self-defense classes being taught to students, and never is it a firearms class. It's a how to scratch them with your car keys class. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going, really? All right, we're going to let you try that and then watch somebody punch you in the nose and break your nose and see how well the whole car key thing worked for you. Right. It's just, it's, it's nuts. People don't appreciate the level of violence. And, Jim, you've done martial arts stuff, right? Yeah, I still do martial arts stuff, yeah. You still do? Still okay. learning. All right. Still learning. Still, oh, yeah, always. But if you decided to just go 100%, mm-hmm. and somebody said, well, you know, I've got my car keys you know, between the, my fingers, and I can scratch you, how long would it take you to put them on the ground? Mm, before or after I put their keys into their neck. Yeah, that. that my point. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, if you have nothing else, sure. But, I mean, come on. Really? Do what you got to do. Right. I mean, use a salt shaker. You can kill somebody with a salt shaker. Not I'm pepper, here, though. Just mean, salt. Just salt. Never, then would never, they be never, assaulted? Never, never, never. They would be totally assaulted, yes. They're oh. insulted. Ooh. Tom, you were just <laughs> salivating over that. You, just, you weren't <laughs> that. Waiting, I, waited, so I was bad. waiting for it. <laughs> I saw this drool coming out of his mouth. I said, well, he's not a drummer, so I wonder what's coming up. And it was oh, that. now that's harsh. That was that a double just, burn. <laughs> that was a double burn. Man. Okay, if you're going to talk about drummers, I'm going to leave now. Well, it actually, worked. we'll be back it in worked. just a minute. It's it the worked. Jim and Tom show. Don't, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> Trust Inceptor ARX, preferred defense for your self-defense ammunition. It features patented technology and an advanced lead-free polymer copper material for unprecedented terminal performance. Its non-hollow point round nose design means it feeds flawlessly and won't plug or fail to transfer energy on impact. Lightweight projectiles reduce weight in your carry gun and add velocity to all loads and calibers. Inceptor ARX is available in all popular handgun calibers. Learn more at InceptorAmmo.com. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Battle Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Okay, the truth is I am not a recovering drummer because I've never <laughs> admitted that, that was a problem. 
<laughs> what do they say? You, you, you can't start helping yourself till you admit that there's an actual problem. Right. Yeah, you have to accept the so, truth. <laughs> I am, however, a, uh, a person who hangs around guitar players. There you go. So, um, that's be, dangerous. I, I can hold a guitar while they play, or play guitar. So I know for a fact you can play four chords very well. So don't kid me. No, no. You know very well that I can play four chords. There's a difference. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, speaking of stupid ideas, I've got something to combat the uh, tennis ball. (laughs) Thanks so much. I really, that makes me feel so much better. (laughs) Let me me preface. Tell him what I'm doing. He says, speaking of stupid ideas. Uh, No, Uh, I was going. (laughs) So this is is just whoop up on Tom Day. Nice nice segue, huh? No, I was actually referring to the tennis ball thing, but I didn't get that far in my sentence because you had me laughing. Uh, To respond to something in kind with just as stupid as the tennis ball thing, but I just, you know, I love doing that. I've got a solution to all these school shootings, everything else. The left doesn't want people to carry guns in school if you don't have a badge, right? Okay. And people that are sane think everybody should be able to protect themselves. So... Here's my, my big... You want a drum roll over there, Tom? For me? Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, they should pass a, a federal law that says in the event of a catastrophe like this, anybody present is automatically deputized. They're pre-sworn in. Mm-hmm. And now the proverbial feces hits the fan, and it is a mm-hmm. cop that takes the idiot out, and it's over with. And lives are saved, and then the non-gun folks can be happy because there's still somebody with a badge, so... We're still right. You, it's an automatic one-hour deputizing. Thing. Yeah. yeah. You're, you can be a deputy for an hour. Or whatever, <laughs> yeah. You know, that way the problem's resolved like it should have been in the first damn place, and they're happy because a badged person <laughs> ended it, not a civilian. Isn't that weird that they That's want you so to stupid. have be wearing a certain kind of clothes or to have the, the badge to do the exact same thing that the person without the badge would do? Mm-hmm. But they want, but they want you to wait and let more people die before the approved person shows up. <sighs> yeah, it's it, makes weird, much, it makes as much sense as the tennis it's, ball. It's, stuff. it's just a weird deal. So okay, so we we go out shooting yesterday. Mm-hmm. I mean, and this is just an informal thing. We're literally at a place. We take well. First of all, it's cool because we're driving the four wheelers up this trail. And basically, it, you could never take a car in there. Mm-hmm. And so that's very cool. So you get to dri- drive, you know, things and burn up gas and, you know, pollute the environment. Make and, noise. You know, yeah. Kill, yeah. You know, kill burn up, use you know, old old dinosaurs and things. Uh-huh. And then so we're making noise and then we get out the guns and we make more noise. Uh, but we were doing the, for the first lady of the shoot, who was a good shot, by the way. Uh, but I could tell she was anticipating a little bit, just a little bit yanking the trigger, still shooting, you know. Uh, seven inch, seven to eight inch groups. Okay, and we're back okay. at about ten yards okay. uh, with the three twenty seven Federal. Mm. So I t- did. I did the ball and dummy drill, which with the revolver is fabulous. You know, you just I handed it to her. I said, "Look, I said some of these uh, chambers are full and some of them are empty. You won't know which one's which when you get <laughs> Until to you it. see your muzzle jump." <laughs> and of course, she's thinking, okay, now that I know some are empty, then I'm not going to do that, right? Mm. No. <laughs> ah. two, two live rounds, and the next one, the muzzle dips toward the ground. And then what was interesting was, you know, she did a whole cylinder that way. And I said, now, well, back, here's the back full up cylinder. Back up Go second, shoot. Though. Back up one yes, second, though. Yes, 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 yes. That's human nature. I mean, it's not like she's doing anything wrong. When you got something in your hand no. that's blasting you, I you know it's that. coming I, again. I, I said, look, that's physiology. You have an explosion going off two feet from your face. Mm-hmm. You, that's not good, generally speaking. Right. You know, I mean, it's not something you would normally do on purpose. Right. So it's a mental game. Uh, yeah. So it is a mental game. And so what you have to do is give them, okay, what is the thing I want to avoid even more than that? And that is embarrassment. I don't want people to see me yank the muzzle down when it goes click. That's the motivation right there. And not a, embarrassing yourself is a huge motivator for most people. So anyway, see, I, I put the uh, I put five rounds, I think, five rounds. Uh, anyway, whatever it was, I filled it up. I said, all right, now shoot. Using the same technique, right? She just did a, the ball and dummy drill. Her group went from, call it eight inches, to about Three inches. Wow. Mm. Yeah, At what it distance? was spectacular. 30 feet? 10 yards. Mm. Okay. Yeah, 30 feet. Uh, well, which was it? It was spectacular, the difference. Yeah, because she, she, it's, it's kind of like golf. I mean, it's 
totally opposite of golf, but it's kind of like golf. Where it's just it, like it, golf, except it's not. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it, it's so much, there's so much mind stuff in it that once you train your body, the physiological stuff with your brain, it, it's you can overcome everything. It is really. I'm, I'm, well, you know, we say that shooting is a mental game. You know, I, I've heard it said a lot of different ways. Somebody said, you know, the most important six inches in shooting is between your Two ears. ears right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. You know, there's that. Uh, and I told him, I said, look, here's the thing. You're not bad. You just need to work on the same thing that everybody works on. And I said, and here's the thing. I don't care if it's Rob Latham or Max Michelle or Doug Koenig or whomever it is. They're all working on their trigger. Mm-hmm. They were all working on their trigger press. And, you know, in their case, maybe it's how to be faster. Maybe it's how to do different things. But they all know how to aim. We all know how to aim. Mm-hmm. If you're beyond basic beginner level, aiming is not the issue. The trigger is the issue. That's just what it is. Right. And you can get into breathing and stance and a million other things. But the major well, stance the major doesn't story. matter at all. Stance does not matter. Okay, what I meant is if your yeah. your feet are together and you're shooting a rifle, it's throwing you, you know, you don't have yeah. a good strong stance to your... True. But I'm, I was particularly thinking about handgun because people defense, always get all hung up on handgun. And I was actually working with them said, look, you know, if you want to move when you're shooting your handgun, then you really ought to start with a basic, you know, feet apart, shoulder width apart, mm-hmm. but not one foot behind the other, all that stuff, because it makes it hard to move. Right. But you could stand there. Well, all right. You guys, you guys can stand there with your back to the target and twist all the way around and make a good shot. Mm-hmm. You know, if you take your time, you could, right? You right. can do that. Yeah. Uh, um, as, long, as long as you manipulate the trigger well. What you can't do is yank the trigger from the perfect stance, a grip, and everything else and still shoot well. Right. That yeah, makes sense. The, I would say the trigger is 95% of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I really would. It's... Um, and you but did. No, it's, Not you, only would you say that, you just did. I, I can did. play it back for the, you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's a good point you make, Jim, when it comes to shooting a, a particularly heavier recoiling gun, mm-hmm. a, long, a long gun. Uh, a good stance makes a difference. Mm-hmm. And for wing shooting, people don't appreciate how a stance can affect you. If your stance is too wide or if you have one foot behind the other and you're shooting a, a la the old rifle-style shooting, it restricts your ability to swing left and right. Ah, I thought you were going to say center of gravity prevents your second shot from being there. Yeah, but think, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, swing, yeah. You're right. It's uh, like you've shot before or something. Mr. Jim Kinsey, aced clay target shooter since you went. <laughs> I retired. I retired at where I was. Tom, Tom, does he, Tom, does he like to remind you every time he sees you? Oh, yeah, by yeah, the way. Uh, <laughs> he finds a way to slip it in every conversation. Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, by, by the way, you know, I, sh- I was shooting in the 90s the other day. You got a new car, Tom. You should park that over where I just shot in the 90s. <laughs> Did I mention that? <laughs> just works its way into every conversation, right? Right, right, right sure. Oh, uh, all okay. right. Tip for wing shooters. If you're going to shoot traps, keep sporting place, whatever it is. All right. Here's your tip. Figure out where, like if you've got a real hard right to left crosser, set up so that you are lined up where you want to break the target. Now, don't move your feet. Ah. Twist your body back toward the trap. Ah. Hmm. So rather than swinging and bunching everything up and coiling the spring as you swing, you are uncoiling the spring as you swing, and it frees you up to move more swiftly and smoothly. That doesn't preclude you from follow through, obviously, but you're no. I mean, the the but what it does happen is if you set up at the trap mm-hmm. and then you have to swing, swing, swing. You're all tight, like, yeah. Right, you're tight, and it stops your swing now. No follow through, which is to your point, right? Huh. So set up for where you want the target to break, and then twist your body back. Not and here's the other thing. Don't look at the trap. Even if you can see the trap, don't look at the trap. Look about 10 feet away from the trap. Right. Because you don't need to see the the, tra- the target coming out of the trap. You need to see it oh, 10 feet, 15 feet. Mm-hmm. And then you just think, okay, I'm going to see it here, and then I'm going to mount the gun here, and then I'm going to break it here. Hmm. You have to have those three places in your mind. Uh, the, the flight of the bird is going to be there. I'm going to insert, and then I'm going to break it there. I'm going to try all that stuff. 
I'm probably Shoot, be in the low may, 70s. If, and if you do all of that, <laughs> you're going to be in the Gresham. 60s, partner. <laughs> Damn you, Gresham. <laughs> you, you know what, Tom? Then we won't have to listen to this. <laughs> uh, you know, after this commercial coming up, I'm going to force you to listen to more. No! Yes, yes. That's the way it's going to be. Think all ammo's the same? Think again. Agula Ammunition uses the highest quality materials and is one of the world's largest rimfire manufacturers. Want Silent 22 ammo? Powderless Super Calibri and Sniper Subsonic merely whisper. For light recoil and big performance, mini shells make any shotgun a pleasure to shoot. Match grade and the Hyper Fast Super Maximum and Interceptor 22 loads get the maximum for your rifle or pistol. Visit AguilaAmmo.com slash rimfire. Feed your firearm. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. All right, so Tom, what have you been shooting? What's going on with you, man? I'm going to use the excuse of, of just working too much to be able to go to the range. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that means? It's airsoft time, baby. Oh. oh. I was going to say, how did you enjoy your last day of gun talk here, Tom? But Tom, <laughs> no, no, Tom no, gave no. you this a way out. Opportunity. <laughs> this is this is this is airsoft because you can do that in your home. Right, right. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, you know, Red Solo Cup may be a cool song, but it's also <laughs> a <fabulous> target. <laughs> and if you can get you like 20 of those things scattered around, I, you can have your own little party going right there. Yeah, not the only kind of party that involves Red Solo Cups. Right. <laughs> Try not to combine yeah. the two parties. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to a party that has them for other reasons, you might not want to start shooting them out of people's hands and stuff just just because you can. Because somebody may take offense and shoot back. Mm-hmm. And they may not have yeah. air, air soft. Or, God no, forbid, really, get hit you know, by two dozen tennis balls coming at you. <laughs> that shuts you down. You know, I, 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 I just can't I believe how stupid now. it is. It's just that you can't. I know. You're just going, <laughs> what? 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 What did he say? But seriously, uh, airsoft is such a cool training thing. Um, you're lining up sights, you're pressing the trigger. Uh, you know, if you go press a trigger 3,000 times, you're going to be so much better. And you can do that for, I mean, what would 3,000 shots with an airsoft gun? A hundred bucks by the time you're done with CO2 cartridges and everything else. That's like nothing. You know, try 3,000 rounds with your nine millimeter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That adds yeah. Up. It adds up big time. Yeah. Uh, you'd just be a better shooter. So I'm glad you mentioned that. People, everybody is pressed for time. Nobody has you know, the t- all the time they would like. And they make mm-hmm. airsofts in the identical pieces you carry. So you don't, you don't have to get something. Yeah. yeah, for most guns, not every gun. But, I mean. For most guns, and there's something close. And if you can find one that's identical, it'll actually work right in your holster. I was going to say that. It would fit right in the holster, then. You could get your draw practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, you can work on your draw. Uh, you know, and kind of start off somewhat slowly and one of the things you can do is say okay i'm going to work on drawing and marrying my hands up in front of me but i'm going to keep that finger straight along the slide until the gun comes out and then when the sights are on the target here uh, now here's the other thing when we say when the sights are on the target that does not mean that you're looking at the sights the sights are on the target when the gun is right there in front of your chest and way below your eyes aren't they Elaborate, please. All right. So you draw your gun, right? Mm-hmm. And you put, comes out of your holster, comes straight up. You've got your set of drawing right hand. The left hand, when you do a, a draw properly, should go right to the center of your chest mm-hmm. while you're drawing. And then the two hands will marry up right in front of your chest. Oh, okay. So just say no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At you, that point, the sights are already on the target. Right. Whether or not you're looking at them. It, that kind of ties into the whole idea of the safe draw where if it was to discharge coming up from the holster to your chest, it's still mm-hmm. pointed at the target. It, mm-hmm. It's in the t- direction of the target generally. 
speaking. Yes. It, same kind of deal. So when yeah. you bring it up to your chest, it, it's on the target even though you haven't sighted it per se. Right. So so if you had – say you had an attacker who was four feet in front of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, You're not going to aim. What I, I, All I'm saying is – you could put your finger on the trigger as soon as the gun is level, whether or not you're looking through the sights. Right, because it's it's pointed in his general direction. It's his pointed or her general where direction. it's right. supposed to be pointed. Right. So you know, basically on target, on trigger, off target, off trigger. That's a really good thing to work on with an airsoft gun because you can just really concentrate on that aspect of mm-hmm. it. If when the gun comes up, your finger can touch the trigger. You don't, don't even have to shoot. But then when the gun comes down and comes off the target, you take your finger off the trigger. So it's on target, on trigger, off target, off trigger. Yeah. And that's also... Do that 500 times, it just, it's a great training. Yeah. Video. And also, if you, I mean, you had to discharge with it right in your chest because he was so close. You're not going to stick your hands all the way out. Then he grabs it. Or he or she. Well, that's a great point. Yes. So you, you need you to don't be, want to be prepared st- to shoot when it, anytime after it leaves a holster, in essence. The whole part of the draw is with your elbow out and the barrel toward the target. It it never goes towards anything else. Is if I have the concept right. right. I mean, yeah. If the if, assuming you are, have a call it a three to four o'clock position draw, mm-hmm. <clears throat> even an appendix draw, the gun is still pointed down and it comes up and doesn't swing. That's why I'm not crazy about cross draw because it tends to sweep across a you know a lot of people or a lot of area mm-hmm. there. But yeah, the other thing is when you draw, pull the pistol straight up out of your holster. Think about not cocking the gun forward, but think about dropping your elbow. Right, right. That's, that's part the of move. It. Right. When the elbow comes down, the gun will come up, and that's a good, firm, solid grip because now your elbow is basically locked in on the side on the side of your body there. Right. And from that and point, you can start shooting right there. Exactly. Exactly. We're saying the same thing. Yeah. We're okay. just saying it different ways. Mm-hmm. That way, no one can understand us. <laughs> that way, we <laughs> both well understand each other. Great. It's perfectly gobbledygook. <laughs> What's come up this week? What you got cooking that you can't tell us about? Oh, there's this one uh, thing, but I can't tell you about. No, 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 no. I'm going to be I'm going down to Utah mm. uh, this week and going to go to uh, see the folks at Barnes Bullets, <gasps> see what's new with some of their bullets and their ammo, and also their 30-year anniversary is coming up. So we're going to talk about uh, all the advancements in ammunition and things they've been doing for 30 years, so that's very cool. Then we're going to go over to Liberty Safe, and you know what we always do there? We tear up something. We torture test <laughs> the safe. Yeah, we have done it by throwing it off of buildings. We have drug it up mountains. We have th- rolled them down mountains. We have stuck di- literally dynamite inside of them and on the outside of them. I don't know what they have planned this time, but they're pretty creative. So we're going to be, this is all for the Guns and Gear TV show. So we'll right. be doing some fun stuff there, too. So you're going to Barnes, you said, huh? Yes. Get Jim some 10 millimeter. Jim needs 10 I hear voices. Mm-hmm. It's funny how that happens. a voice in my head. Yes. Yeah, they actually have a really nice 10 millimeter load that was designed for hunting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if it were work there, I don't know why it wouldn't work for self-defense. I will mm-hmm. ask them about yeah, 10 Yeah, please. I'm curious because I'm looking for a source, as always. Okay, so which you have uh, two 10 millimeters now? Three. I have a Kimber and I have, I have two GT te- uh, 20s. G- two of the GT20s. One thing. on each this side. This is the SIG P220. Mm-hmm. 226, right. isn't it? 220? 226. 220. 220. No, 220. Yeah. Compromise. It's 223, but it... Point seven. <laughs> yeah, but we really like it. Um, I got two. I always wanted to get a left-hand holster and carry them both just to be, you know, an idiot. I think so. you will be uh, two gun Jim. Jim, how'd you get Which over 300 the pounds? <laughs> Can't do no, these. That's, that's not the same as two can Jim. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fruit Loops. Your Fruit Loops crush them, I tell you. <laughs> oh, not Lordy. that toucan. Okay, so two, at, least, at least they're not two tennis ball cans. So. Oh, there you go. It's yeah, I, know. I, I, am, I am absolutely going to stew about that one. That one drives me nuts. And I, I know he wanted to say that, hey, you're not really understanding it. And I'm going, yeah, I think I pretty much got a handle on it at this point. We're going to teach people to rush the guy mm-hmm. without a gun. We're going to teach people to throw tennis balls at a guy with an AR-15 as a way of distracting his aim, which, of course, and you made the point during a break, Jim, which I thought was great. Okay, so it disturbs his aim, so now he shoots Mary instead of Harry. Is that a solution? Yeah, boy, what a win-win that is. What drives me nuts is that it's a sheriff's department actually teaching this stuff. We should call yeah. him and just say, now, is there a particular brand tennis ball? Does it have to be match play tournament stuff, or could it be what ca- cheap? What caliber? <laughs> what caliber? 
Right, right. Are these FMJ tennis balls? What are we? <laughs> Well, you, if you had the tennis ball can, you could cut the bottom off, put some lighter fluid in there, shoot a couple thunk at them. Haven't I seen that on YouTube? <laughs> Probably right before so. the it's... ER room visit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those, and uh, you've seen the YouTube videos where the guys explain what happened. He's got bandages all over, and he's still got his uh, his yeah. hospital bracelet on. <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> Here, hold my beer. That's right. No, the famous guy who starts off with, I just shot myself. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just seen that one? I shot myself. Is that, yeah, is actually, that you about? know, and yeah. To, yeah, to his credit, he did a really good job with explaining. It became a safety video. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, more power to him, but at the same time, mm. yeah. No. All preventable, man. It, it, it is all of that. Now, but the other side of that is we probably all really need to get serious about Taking our trauma medicine class and taking and carrying a tourniquet with us everywhere we go. Yeah, I have been negligent on that. I have to admit, have, have if that. not for you, for somebody else, as an accident, well, sure. somebody just sticks his hand through a plate glass window or whatever. You know, it just you know, it's, it's a put, huge life. Put together a gun talk kit. We need. Hmm. Yeah, could do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we may have to got work a, with got enough sources we put together. Yeah, enough sources. We do. You know, the, the, my only concern there, honestly, would be. It's kind of like uh, having a gun with no training. Mm-hmm. Uh, you definitely need some training on oh, how to do this stuff. Sure, sure. But I'm saying, so, I mean, you, I you, you have your preference of flashlights, your pre- preference of turn to kit, and there's a lot of good one one off kits in there. But to have, have your own right. GT kit would be be cool. That's well, all. We may have to take a look at that. That's not a bad idea. We'll see if we can do that. I yeah, think I can't believe that, you came uh, up with that, Tom. That was a great idea. <laughs> I'm thinking a box of Snoopy bandages would be great. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Aids, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep, you know, for your owies. Mm-hmm. So there you, you go. And you could All send right. it to people. A project. A, you could send it to people in a Spalding tennis ball can, a little shipper tube. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you yeah, I shoot in the low nineties? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we are most definitely done. Uh, have fun this week, uh, my friend. Be safe. We'll do. We will go uh, visit and see what's up and what's new. And then when we come back, at least the things they will let us talk about, we will talk about them next week right here. We'll also have uh, Alan Gottlieb yeah, on from the Second Amendment Foundation, get some news of what's going on there. Cool. And okay. uh, you know, all the rest of it. Make so, sure to ask him that question yeah. that I had about the uh, civil rights violation or civil rights. Uh, yes, we're going to basically yeah. ask, you know, are they looking into this whole into it uh, financial uh, institutions deal? Because there's, that there's a couple angles might there, yeah. be in there. It's a it's a good question. I just don't know against, what's happening there. You don't think it'd be against federal anti trade laws and stuff? It would only make sense. Don't know. I mean, don't know. You are expecting to find logic in the laws, yeah, my yeah, friend. Yeah, my mistake. What was you I? You need to rethink this. <laughs> what was I? Oh, thinking? hey Tom, did I mention that Jim has been shooting in the low nineties? <laughs> Not you two. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, there's one way we can prevent this from sinking any further. Just take them out again. Stop. And destroy that record. Right, right, right. Okay, Okay. you know what I'm saying? Stop the violins. (laughs) And and the sax. The sax and violins. It's terrible. Exactly. All right, and with that, I'm gone. You guys can talk all you want to, but I don't want to hear anymore. Okay, great. (laughs) Take care. Uh, Be good, buddy. See you guys. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show. Yeah.